Hello everyone. For this video, we're going to be talking about purine metabolism. Now, I labeled it as metabolism because we're going to be talking about the synthesis, the breakdown of it, and also the salvage of purine metabolites as well. So the first thing we have to understand is what are the purines? So first A gives us the mnemonic pure as gold. So pure for purines and as gold for adenine and guanine. So now let's talk about the pathway itself. So, our first molecule that we're going to start with is riblose 5-phosphate. Riblose 5-phosphate comes from the HMP shunt, which I have a video on as well. So if you're still confused about that, please make sure to go to my channel and check that out. Second, what's going to happen is that it's going to be converted into PRPP. Now, this is going to occur by the addition of two phosphates using ATP. And it's going to be done using PRPP synthetase. Next, PRPP is going to be converted into IMP using PRPP aminotransferase. IMP can later be turned into three pretty much uh, molecules which we're going to be discussing. Now IMP can go on to eventually form DGDP using IMP dehydrogenase and rapinucleotide reductase. It can also form DADP also using rapinucleotide reductase and then it can also then form hypoxanthine through the molecule of inosine. So these are pretty much the basic de novo synthesis pathways. But now what I want to talk to you about is actually how these molecules, so once these purines break down, how can they be salvaged in order to form these D, DGDPs and DADPs again in order to incorporate themselves into the DNA. So what is required well, what is seen is that we can see that there's two enzymes that are very important. The first enzyme is APRT, which is going to be involved in taking the breakdown of ADP product, which is adenine, and using PRPP in order to form AMP, which can then go back and form DADP. The next enzyme is HGPRT which actually has two roles, and that is going to take guanine and also hypoxanthine and PRPP using PRPP in order to go back and form GMP and IMP. So you can see that these two molecules, HGPRT and APRT, are very important for the salvage pathway. So therefore these products can go back around and then form DDP and DGDP to be incorporated into the DNA. So that sums up the salvage pathway. So now let's talk about how these purines are completely broken down and it's into the urine. Now, IMP is straightforward in that it's eventually going to form hypoxanthine, and then hypoxanthine is going to form xanthine using xanthine oxidase. Xanthine is going to go to uric acid, also using xanthine oxidase, and then uric acid is going to be into the urine. Now, all the other, now DGDP and DA. ADP are actually going to be following this common pathway as, a, as well, but they're just going to come in at different points. So as we can see, with AMP, once it's broken down into adenosine, it's going to use adenosine deaminase in order to form inosine, which is then going to follow the same pathway through hypoxanthine on towards the urine. With GMP, what we're going to have is, instead of going back around doing this, the salvage pathway, guanine, is going to be converted to xanthine, and then xanthine is going to go towards the urine using that pathway as well of xanthine oxidase. So that's so right right there is pretty much how these molecules are broken down. If we can understand that they pretty much come in and stem into this one pathway, it can make a lot of sense. So now let's talk about the different drugs and diseases that can occur and are associated with each of these enzymes. So the first thing we'll talk about is sigma captopurine. Now sigma captopurine is going to inhibit this entire pathway because what it is is it's actually going to mimic DGDP and DADP so that these molecules are going to come in and incorporate itself into the DNA and therefore since they are just shams, they're not going to be able to actually produce the end product. So therefore this whole pathway and this enzyme gets inhibited as well. The next thing which you're going to have is mycophenolate and ribavirin. 
Now, both of these molecules are actually going to inhibit IMP dehydrogenase directly, so they're not going to be able to produce DGDP. Then the next thing we can talk about is ADA deficiency, which is seen in skin. So with this, and so what we're going to have is we're not able to break down AMP, so it cannot be released. So what you're going to have is you're going to have an accumulation of DADP, which is quite damaging, especially for the white, white blood cells. Next, what we can talk about is we can talk about uh, we can talk about hydroxyurea. So hydroxyurea, if we also remember back to my video on the pyr uh, pyrimidine synthesis, is also seen there, where it's pretty much just going to be going to inhibit ribonucleotide reductase. So DGDP is not going to be able to be formed here and here as well. But as as you can see, this would not play a role in the synthesis of our RNA molecules, only DNA molecules. Now, the next disease I want to talk about is very important and it's very high yield, which is Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. Now, why it's high yield is that the enzyme it involves is very important and also it leads to gout. And gout shows up a lot as there's very unique clinical symptoms for it. So Lesch-Nyhan is important because it is in deficiency of the enzyme HGPRT. So if we remember that HGPRT is involved in the salvage pathway of guanine and hypoxanthine, then we know that if these two molecules are unable to be salvaged, that means that they're always going to be turned into xanthine and eventually uric acid. So there's going to be an increased secretion of uric acid. And since there's not enough salvage going on, you're going to have to increase or ramp up the de novo synthesis. So therefore, you'll see high levels of IMP and PRPP. So as a result, going back to the high levels of uric acid that's going to occur, when there's high levels of uric acid, this is known as gout. Well, it can manifest itself in gout. Because what's going to happen with these high levels of uric acid is that they're going to be converted into monosodium uh, uric crystals. And these crystals will actually build up a joint such as the toes and they'll cause uh, swellings and pains, which is very uh, uncomfortable. Now, with, with, with this uh, gout, it's actually... Uh, it's strange because, well, it's not strange. Well, if you realize that different meats such as seafoods and steak, they actually have large amounts of purines that are contained that are contained within those foods. So when you eat like a large meal of meats, for example, you can have it. You can have an acute attack of gout because of a large influx of purines that are occurring, and this is going to be pushing that pathway out into the uric acid, as there's no other because it's just being. Uh, broken down continuously. Now with the gout, how it can actually be treated is that it can be treated with allopurinol. Now allopurinol is going to inhibit xanthine oxidase. And if you remember from gout, is that we're going to have increased levels of uric acid. So therefore, we want to stop this overproduction of uric acid and stop the formation of these uh, monosodium crystals that are going to be occurring. So therefore, allopurinol is commonly prescribed. So as you can see, that pretty much sums up purine in a nutshell. Main thing to keep note of are lesionahan, allopurinol, and of course the enzymes that can be associated with, with each of the um, drugs that have been used and are shown in this diagram. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please throw them below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And good luck studying, and best of luck.